Hey, 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 hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Limitless Show. Today we are going to be talking about the feeling of not feeling ready to do something, especially when it comes to a dream or an aspiration you have. So if there's something that you really want to do, but you have that feeling of, mm, I'm not quite ready, then this video is definitely for you. <laughs> Today I have a wonderful guest. I'm so excited to talk to him, Willie Johnson. We met over Facebook and he has some really inspiring things on Facebook. I'll definitely put all of his details in the description below, but I'm so excited he's here because he has so much wisdom and so much to share with you today. So thank you so much for being here. Glad to be here, so thank you so much. This show is all about limitations that we've had in our past lifetime or we're having right now, and we discuss how we overcome it in the hopes that if someone's dealing with that same limitation, that maybe we can have give some advice that might help them. Right. You said you'd like to talk about along the lines of not feeling ready especially when it comes to you know starting a dream or starting a goal or something you've wanted to do for ages but you just you know you don't feel ready how has this stopped you in your lifetime the feeling of not feeling ready it's one of the things like when you you know we're so programmed to do things a certain way right you know whether it's uh, a job or, or a certain task that you're so used to doing you know our minds are programmed that way everything that we kind of do, we set out to do, we, we know how, right? If we're going to take a trip or vacation, whatever we do, we kind of go, okay, we're going to do this. We get our tickets. We, we, we plug in the address and the GPS. So our minds are wired to know how to do something, right? But then when it comes to something that's an idea or a feeling or a passion that we have inside of us, it's just kind of like a, a feeling. We don't really know how to explain it. We don't really know how to do it. We don't really see it. And so what our minds tries to do is just tries to figure out how right out of the gate. So, so, so my dream is I, I, I want to, I want to run a marathon. Okay. Well, how, right. How, how am I going to do that? Or how am I going to write this book? I kind of always had that, you know, I want to want to be a coach. I want to be a speaker. I want to help people. And it was like, well, how do I do that? Right. So you instantly try to figure out how, and you think about it for a minute and you go, okay, well, I don't really know how to do that. So we back off, <laughs> we back <laughs> off, right. We, 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 we back off. It's just, it's a normal uh, mindset. We just go back into that normal day to day. And so then we push it down, right? We push it away. And then, but then if it's something that's in you, it consistently will come back. So it'll come back up again. And we ask the same question <laughs> and we go, how? And we go, I don't, I don't know. And so we would push it back. And, and then if it's, if it's a crazy enough idea, if it's a big enough idea, you can ask other people, but that is for them, right? That may not necessarily be for you. So for something for you, for me, it was like, how do I take this passion of wanting to help and inspire and motivate people and to believe it myself that people will listen, that people will want that advice, that people will respond. Um, and, I, and I just didn't know. I just had kind of like no idea. So it really it really limited me for years. And so I just stayed in that, what I call that comfort zone. We just keep doing it and, and doing the same thing. And then one day it just kind of popped, right? It just kind of, I just said, you know, I said, you know, I see people doing, I see people speaking, I see people coaching and I go, I can, you know, I can do that. And then it just started with going back and just kind of reading and gaining knowledge from people that have, you know, have done it. You know, it's like, if you can believe that you can do something, you will acquire the capabilities to do it, but you have to start up here. Um, and that's kind of what I did. I started there. I just kind of self-taught myself. And as I gained confidence and belief and started taking action, those sort of things just kind of started evolving from me saying, okay, I don't know how, but I know I have to do something. So it was like just starting that whole, you know, that whole mindset, right? <clears throat> of going from a fixed mindset, because in a fixed mindset, we say I can't, or I don't know how. And that's the wrong way to look at it, you know, to adapt the mindset of a growth mindset is to say, hey, I don't know how, but I believe that I can. Mm. Right. So if I believe that I can, even if I don't know how, then I will figure out a way to do it and consistently pushing that mindset in. Yeah. I don't know how, but I can. not I don't know what, but I'll figure it out and yeah. kind of going along those lines until you get on that journey. And, and it's just a daily thing. It doesn't just go away. <laughs> It doesn't just stop. Yeah, it's something that you have to keep working at. But that's mm -hmm. such a great point where you don't know how you're going to do it, but you know you can do it and you know that you will do it. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people shut themselves off straight away by saying, 
oh, I can't do this. I don't know how, so I'm not going to do it. And if you don't think you're going to do it, you're not going to try because right. why would you ever try something that you can't do? So it's kind of that thought of, I don't know how this is going to happen. I know I want to do this thing, but it can happen somehow and it will happen. It's kind of just always taking that kind of first step, I guess. And mm -hmm. like you said, you went to reading books. That must, Was that your first step to finding out how you did what you, you're doing now? Right. So, you know, it, there's a thing that goes, if, if someone's done something to a level of success or, or, or at a high level, that means that it's a possibility to be done. That lets you know, that gives reference that this is a possibility, right? So taking that belief of a possibility and embed, embedding that into your thoughts, like, okay, it's not like you're, you know, trying to create something that's never been done, which, you know, people that do that have the even stronger sense of belief. But if you're along the lines of something that has been done, whether it's writing a book, whatever it is, you follow and find someone that resonates with you and, and how they taught themselves because there's books, there's videos, there's so much information out there. And you take that and you put it into your own format so that you can learn from it. You know, you take it and make it your own, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where it started for me was to take and see that these things are done. So how do I get myself around to getting on that path? And it, and it started with changing up here. It's just right between here. They call it the most powerful six inches or so. I have a bigger head, so it's probably like, you know, seven <laughs> inches. <laughs> but it's like, that's where all that capability is. And, and we've just been wired and programmed to only use so much. What is it like? Maybe 10% or so of our actual brain that we mm -hmm. actually use, which is just astounding. So to put more thought and time into that is almost like rewiring your belief. Um, so yeah. it started with me with understanding that, getting out of that fixed mindset of this is how I am. This is what I believe. This is how I view. And then shifting that to go, hey, well, this is how I am, but this is what I can be. This is what I can do yeah. if I just embed that, that mindset and attaching it to the belief. So I took what I, what I believed and just started to tell myself that, you know, started to journal, started to meditate, started to really clear my mind of all the old beliefs and values and views of how I saw my own self was the first step for me. And then embedding and replacing that with, I can, I do, I can acquire the skills, I can read the skills, it's all out there. There's so much information. It just takes a discipline and a focus on what you're trying to achieve and, and going at that consistently every single day and finding, finding that information, learning it and taking action on it. Because sometimes we could just gather information, right? We could gather information and never do anything with it versus taking that information, applying it to action. And, and some things are going to work and some things aren't. I say you're, you're either going to succeed, you're either going to fail, or you're going to survive, right? Mm -hmm. So one of those three things are going to happen if you take action. And from that, you're going to always learn. So no matter what, if you take, like to that first step, you're going to learn. So that's why it just took one step. Oh, okay. That didn't work. Okay. Well, that's okay. I learned that. Take this step. Oh, that worked well. So I'll continue doing that. Or the word, the best one is when you're don't feel like it, when you don't know, and you just say, I'm just going to try it anyways. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to do it messy. Right. Just, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just, you have to do something because our mind says, don't do it. It's a, it's a protection mechanism, right? It comes in and says, don't do that. That won't work. Don't try it. You're, you're going to fail. And you have to, you know, kind of, Tell yourself like, hey, stop, shut up. I'm going to try it. And at the end of that, you're going to either succeed, fail or survive. And yeah. that's kind of what I did and just continue to do every day. So from me understanding that and tell me if I'm wrong, the thought of not feeling ready and the reasons why you were limited by that was because it was all in your head. It was all in your beliefs. What kind of beliefs were limiting you? What were you saying in your head before? And how did you change them? The very first thing that comes up is just the fear, right? And, and, and fear is, is very interesting because it's, it's an unknown. It's, it's, it's because if it's new, you don't have any reference of why you fear it, right? You don't have a, oh, I fear it because I did this and it didn't work, right? If it's brand new, there's just the fear of the unknown, the fear of, you know, people not responding, the fear of rejection, the fear of what everyone else is going to say, because we live in a, uh, we live in a glass house, right? We live in a social media, everything is looked upon, right? So you do something and it, and you don't know quite how to do it, but you're passionate about it. 
people looking go, what are you doing? Well, that made no sense. Like, <laughs> and you have to be able to turn that off. So for me, it was, hey, the fear of, you know, getting past that fear of worrying what people were going to think, of worrying if it was, if I was enough, if I was good enough, because it's easy to compare your, your first chapter to someone that's been doing it for 20 years, right? You're, yeah. you're starting out and you look and you see someone that, you know, they're your first step, but they're on step 50, right? So you, you, you look at it. Yeah. yeah. And you're comparing it. It's, it's, it's a natural instinct. And so then our mind goes, oh, well, don't do that. You're not going to be that. So it's, it's almost like getting my mind to a place where you just focus on what you're doing. And the biggest thing I can say was figuring out my why, right? Why I wanted to do this, right? So from that, I just stayed on my why. My why was, you know, I want to help people improve their lives. I want to help people go figure out how to go through things that I've been through. You know, your experiences, things that you've come across in life, you know, those experiences are very helpful to someone. And we discount that. We discount it because we go, that was my issue. It, it, no, those are issues that a lot of people have. They struggle with whatever it is. So for me, it was figuring out that why and pushing away the, the comments, the responsiveness or how people will respond and, and just saying, I have to take that first step. Then I have to take that second step mm-hmm. and just continuing on that mindset of, tuning everything out, not worrying about how many likes, how many results, how many views. We get so caught up in that because that's what the world tells us is success, right? Yeah. <laughs> it tells us success is gauged off of how many followers and, and, and that's not true success is what you feel that you're doing right, what you feel that you're doing from a place of passion in your heart. So when you, mm-hmm. when you lead with that, you're successful automatically because you're trying versus someone that just talks about trying or or criticizes people that are trying yeah that was, that's not your gauge <laughs> so it's not just finding your why but it's also redefining your word of success because if you know what your version of success is you know whether you're doing well you know you know mm-hmm. whether what you're giving is enough but if you right. define your success by someone else's definition you're never gonna win i really want to ask you though like um, from the beginning, you were saying it's kind of having that faith um, to do mm-hmm. it. But how did you have that faith? Like, how do you have faith in the knowledge that you can do it? Is it just because you, if someone else can do it, why not you? Like, if anyone, why not me? How do you get that faith? How do you fi- get that first step? How do you overcome that fear of people saying, what are you doing? For me, it was, you know, it was, it was going back and, and really looking within because so easy everything around us is external so we look to external answers and everything right i I always say you know google google doesn't have the answer for everything right so we we look for answers from everything around us but the answers are already in here so how to overcome that fear how to overcome that thought of rejection or, or not being enough it all started within here and writing that down right so i i would you know i would I have a process as I would, you know, pray, I would meditate, I would really try to clear my thoughts of what I believe. Because, you know, if you if you believe something for, you know, 15 years, 20 years, or however old you are, if you believe something, it's not going to just go away in one setting that you go, okay, I don't want to think that way anymore. Your mind's wired. It's like, hey, I've been thinking this way for since I was a child. So I don't know any other way to believe it was a consistent and a disciplined effort every day to, you know, to pray on that to say, hey, I, how come I can do this to visualize it, right? Visualization is huge as far as seeing yourself being capable or even attempting to do something. You don't need to you see yourself being that success. You need to see yourself trying, right? You need to see yourself every day trying to do a little bit more towards that towards that position. So I would take that and I would try to build upon that and I would journal. I would write down things like, how did I feel when I did this? But what happens is when you know what it is that you're fearful of, then you just face that, right? You just say, okay, I'm so terrified of this, but I'm gonna do it anyway, yeah. right? I'm gonna do it anyway. You know, whatever it is, if, if you're, you know, fearful of running, whatever it is, whatever you're fearful, of, if you're fearful of writing, like, I don't think anybody would like my writing, write anyway. Just even if it's for a few minutes, right? Just do something that you're afraid of. Because as I did that, as I continue to do that, then that fear just kind of not that I push it down, but I just stared on and I shift around it, right? I go, okay, I'm afraid of this, but I'm just going to go around it. What do I do? And it's like, take action. You outwork it, basically. Whatever it is that you're fearful of, I said, okay, I have to outwork it. Yeah. Okay, so 
once I had that kind of mindset, that kind of gave me the belief as you do it, because as you do something, even if it's in a small fraction, you start to gain belief. And as you gain belief um, and, and competency, you gain confidence, right? You start to go, yeah. okay, I wasn't able to do that. You know, I, you know, but now I've started to do it and I'm not as fearful of it because I, you know, I write them all down. I used to remember writing down everything. Yeah. I've spoken to quite a few people recently because I've been doing this every week with a new guest and fear of something always comes up and I keep on asking, well, how did you overcome that fear? And literally every single person who I've asked that has said, well, I just faced it head on. I just mm -hmm. did it. The thing I was scared of, I just did it. I haven't come across any other <laughs> way that people have got over fear yet. And I don't think there is one because I think the more you run away from it, the more you're going to be scared. But the more you face it head on, uh, the smaller it gets, the bigger mm -hmm. you get. Like it doesn't get easier. The thing as a whole, nothing ever gets easier, but you get stronger as a person. You get stronger in your beliefs. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but everyone I spoke to, they've just said, you've got to just do it head on, which is like the worst thing you want to hear when you want to know how to get over a fear, because it's the last thing you want to do, yeah. isn't it? The last thing yeah, you want to yeah. do is do it. So what's funny is like, when you say that, I think of all the things I would try to do around that thing, right? Yeah. Whatever it is, you know, it's like, okay, well, I don't want to do this. So I'm going to go over here and do that. Right. I'm going to work on, I'm going to work on this, but I'm thinking about it the whole time I'm thinking about it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this but it doesn't go away. It's just sitting there. You know, that I say it's the, the fear and, they, and it has a cousin named doubt, right? Fear and a cousin doubt. So those two kind of sit around and, and the more you try to steer away from it, that doubt gets in there and it goes, see, I told you, you can't do this, right? So you have to, even if, even if it's in small fractions and, and the best time to do it is when you don't feel like doing it. When you, when you go, I don't want to do this. That's when you pick it up. You know, you pick it up and do it. You know, Mel Robbins says, you know, you go, you count down five, four, four three, three, two, two one, one, and you go. How messy it is, how whatever it is, and you look and you go, okay. But when you're done, I remember the first time I was so fearful, I was so nervous, and then the first time when I was done, I got off and I was like, ah, oh, that wasn't so bad, right? So, <laughs> you know, that wasn't so bad. I could do this, and that's with anything, just little bits and pieces, right? You know, I say, how do you? you know, you know, how do you attack a eat elephant, you know, you bite at a time, right? It's so giant, it's so big. You can't just try to consume that fear one. You got to chop it down bit by bit. And, and as you build that confidence, you just kind of face it head on. And, and then that's with anything, because every time you proceed along that journey, whatever it is, you accomplish the next thing you go to accomplish, there's going to be something there, but it's recognizing that fear because on the other side of that fear is what you're going to be great at. Right. So that mm -hmm. thing that you're probably most frightened of is probably what you're best at because <laughs> the stuff is easy. You, mm -hmm. You'll do that all day, but you're not going to grow from that because it's easy for you. You're only going to grow when you're stretching, you're challenging you're yourself. Stretching yourself. Yeah, you challenge yourself. It's like a band, you know, that muscle, your, your, your mind, your belief muscle, you stretch that to a point where you go, I can, I can do this. You're not going to break it. It's just going to bend. Yeah. And as it stretches, you'll grow. So yeah, facing it head on is, I don't, I don't know of another answer. <laughs> yeah. And does, do you find the, um, the doubt goes away? The cousin doubt goes away when you do it as well? It does. But I think we were talking earlier, but that's, it comes every day. Mm -hmm. It'll come up every day because it wants to remind you again that, Hey, yeah, you did it that one time. Maybe someone didn't like it, or maybe someone said this, or maybe, you thought you would get a better response. And then you have to say, stop. It wasn't about the result. It was about me doing it from a place of this is what I'm passionate about. This is what yeah. truly I believe is right. And, and standing there in that, you know, in that arena, you're, you're on your own on that, in that arena, you're on that stage, you're doing it from a place where you can't worry about what the critics are saying or the people that aren't in that arena, because the people that are in that arena that are doing that thing, you know, like, you being here, me, me, we get that. So we would go, Hey, no, I, that's the real deal. Good for you. Right. No matter what you, you, you made that step, but the people outside of that, that don't have that mindset look at it different and they're, they're those critics. So you have to see it for what it is. No, I've just been doing a video about this and it's kind of like this analogy of a football stadium, soccer um, for mm -hmm. Americans and yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the people um, who you should be taking advice from are the, your fellow football players or your coach. Yeah. But a lot of advice you'll get are people from the stadiums. 
And the thing is, they're not in the same game as you. Some of them are too scared to even do what you're doing, yet right. you're taking their opinions on when you don't need to. You need to focus on um, people who are like in your area, in your kind of sporting area, because we can get so right. you know paralyzed by people's opinions um, when we don't need to. I really want to ask you a question because I definitely struggle with this myself. And it's something that you said stopped you from starting. And that was not feeling enough. How did you get over this feeling of mm -hmm. not feeling enough? Because I think so many people feel it. And it's obviously, like we've said, something that you have to deal with every single day. I'm sure you still deal with the feeling of not being enough or good enough or smart enough or, I don't know, something enough. How do you fight that? How do you get over that? So it really depends on what, uh, what, what it is. But your reasoning is, for me, is how am I going to be enough? You know, because my why is strengthened enough to say, hey, this is why I want to do this. Um, so, yeah, <clears throat> I know that I may not be where I want to be, but I always feel that I'm going to get there, right? I always feel that I believe that I can get there. You know, it's not even a belief of how I see myself. It's a belief that I can get there. Um, so overcoming that is just something that you have to kind of continuously work at. And, and it has to be a, a judgment from within, from yourself, not, like you said, not from the audience. Because if you let the audience dictate if you're enough, they're probably never going to be because they're going to compare it to someone that they see doing it. Well, you're not doing it like this person or this person did it fast or this person had more views or sold more books or, you know, so you have to say, what is your, what is your goal, right? What is your, what is enough for you? What, how do you define that, right? How do you define your success? Whatever it is, how do you define your success? You know, is it having your own practice? Is it writing a book just to complete a book? Regardless, right? That's maybe a successful person, you know? So for me, it's like, how many people can you impact? How many lives can you help? And, and mm -hmm. there's really no cap on that. It's just, if, if you can affect one person, to me, if you can affect one person's life to, to improve or change the quality of their life, that means that you're enough. If you're enough for one, you're enough for many, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's always, uh, a correlation of kind of how you see yourself as uh, being enough. What do you, what is your goal in all this? For me, it was just knowing that you can have an impact on someone's life is huge. Um, there's really no value in that, but if you can do that for one person, you could do it for many. So it's this defining from within yourself, what you define as enough. Yeah. How you see what your enough is, not to what someone else is or not to what maybe, you know, you see, on social media that that if you're trying to define it that way you're going to always struggle like you said trying to get there because you just won't you don't you don't know why they're there you don't know how they got to that their, that point being there enough so find out what yours is mm. and just go with that yeah no you said something really that resonated with me there and it was about knowing that you may not be enough now like you may not feel right. enough. Like I feel like everyone feels like they have to be enough, but it's okay to realize that I may not be enough of this now, but I'm working on it and that's okay because I'm getting there. It's like, you may not be this whole enoughness, but you're working on it. Um, and I don't think right. enough is quite the word because not being enough seems really harsh and really horrible. Um, mm -hmm. But it's that learning that I am learning, it's okay. But I was on this kind of weight journey um, and I had these horrible beliefs about myself and mm -hmm. it was making me feel bad. And the way I made myself feel better was, although I'm not the way I want to be now, I'm working towards something that I want to be. And that is enough for now right. because right. I'm on this journey. And that's just, I think you've just completely changed my mindset to being <laughs> with enough, so thank you. Why else do you think people you know, don't feel ready? Are there any other reasons why you feel like people don't feel ready to pursue their dreams or their passions? The biggest piece of that is because they don't really know why, because everything I, I post on this the other day, like, you know, we all want, right? We have a desire to want because a want is a natural, oh, I want to have this, or I want to be successful. I want to, I want to do all these great things, but why, right? Why do you want it? Do you want it because it looks great or do you want it because you see other people doing it and you go, oh, wow, I wanted to do that. So it, it, to me, it comes down to a, a strong why and a decision that you don't want to be in the situation that you're in anymore, right? It's like, hey, I, I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to be in this environment. I don't want to 
be in this job. I don't want to, you know, you know, I don't want to uh, discount my abilities anymore. You know, you're, you're, you're tired of it, right? When you get tired of something, that's when you'll change. Change. Yeah. Right. And so when a person is like, you know, I say like sick and tired of being sick and tired, right. You're just like, I can't do this anymore. They'll make that decision. And, and then the light bulb just comes on. Right. And then they go, okay, what do I have to do? Because then they're open to that mindset of growth and they're open to say, Hey, what can I do now? And then they're open to learning. It's almost like a, just a trickle effect. Like once that, and it, it could, and that decision can be instant. Like, you know, it never, you know, it says never underestimate when a person decides to change, right? Never underestimate because that power to say, hey, I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. Once you decide, we're, we have that ability to decide, but we just choose not to sometimes. We yeah. choose to because it's easy. So when we decide to step out of that comfort zone, um, I think that's what people have to realize is when they say, hey, I don't know how, but I'm willing to step out of that. I don't know how, and I'm willing to step out. And that's where that faith part that we were talking about, that's where that faith comes in. That That's where that belief has to be strengthened by something, right? Our beliefs are strengthened by references. Even if we don't have any of our own, we see that it's been done before, or we just take one first step, whatever it is, even if it's just signing up for that class, right? It's like, hey, I want to I wanna learn this. Okay, well, what is the first thing you're going to do? Well, you decide to sign up for that class. Make that decision to take that first little step. And once you decide that, then you're kind of committed, right? You kind of what throw your heart over the fence and then your body will follow, right? You, you throw it over there. You're going to go naturally because it's a desire. It's a want. So I would say people need to, you know, figure out what that why is, you know, that why and not try to have all the steps there. Just say, I'm taking this why and I'm going to make that first step and I'm going to sign up for the class. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, ask for help. I'm a, I'm a read this book, you know, just one little thing and just continue to build off of that because that's where you kind of pick up that momentum. I call it, you know, building that bridge, right? Brick by brick, you're just kind of laying that along the way. And as you look back, you'll look and see like, Hey, look, I was here, you know, several months ago. And even though I'm not at that result that I want to be over here, why I'm like, right. I'm like, I'm in, in that middle part. And I, and, and you start to feel that confidence. Right. Because once what a, what a confident person is, and it's not necessarily something that you can gain or, or something that you can teach, it's something that they build. And once a person is confident in doing something, you could tell yeah. <laughs> because they start to tune off everything else. Right. They start to go, oh, I don't I don't care about what someone says, because I know from here I see the results. I yeah, I feel the results, you know, like that's building on that enough. So it's yeah, it's really boils down to that very first step out on faith that I, I can be better. Yeah. That all, that's all. It's as simple as that. Like I can, right. I yeah. can't versus I can. It seems like all oh, they have to be more than that. No, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's the simpler things that are the hardest, right? It's like, yeah. just say I can. And, and I think and, that and really, it. yeah, it really helps by saying I can as well. Like I was saying at the start, everything is figure outable. If you say mm-hmm. I can, you're more likely to find the solution So many people are fixed on, I can't. So they're so Mm -hmm. shut off to all the solutions. Whereas if they say I can, and like you said, pray on it, meditate on it, something will come to you in the shower, on a walk, (laughs) like something will like pop in your head and you'll think, yes, that's what I need to do next. And although that next thing might not be right, it feels right in that time. So it is right because it may Mm -hmm. lead you to the next thing or to the actual right thing. But the first step you take may be falling over. But that will lead to someone picking you back up or that will lead mm-hmm. to you, I don't know, finding some other route. But it is taking right. that first step, definitely. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Yeah, because with that step, like you said, you're, you, you know, you're going to get on that right path. And you just, you know, the other big thing is when people are looking to say, okay, well, okay, I get that part. I, you know, I got my why, I made the decision. The second one is, you know, it's like, hey, that, that commitment to be in discipline. And every day making a little effort to get better, not trying to look at the whole picture, just every day, you know, maybe it's three little things. I'm going to do these three things to move forward. I'm going to do these three things to get better and and do it with a positive attitude because you're going to come up against that, um, that failure. You're going to come up against that setback and struggle. So having that mindset of that's okay, you know, because I know I can do better. I can be better. 
I just have to figure it out. I have to find that solution. It's not necessarily a problem, right? A problem is just a definition for opportunity, right? So it's like, I have to find that solution that I can figure this out, that the answer is there and it's, and it's in you where the answer is, right? You just have to mm -hmm. figure out how to align that answer with what you're trying to do. Um, and so, yeah, just stepping out there, having that belief that you can do better, that you will do better, and that mindset of growth, like you said, like I can. It's, yeah. That's going to put you ahead way further than if you tried to figure it all out. Because mm -hmm. you'll never figure it all out. Otherwise, everybody would just do it. They're like, hey, how did you do that? Oh, here, I figured it all out. Here you go. That's all you have to do. <laughs> yeah here's a plan just take it yeah, you know yeah, yeah. You now everyone would be doing it mm -hmm. yeah definitely so other than so what I'm really getting from this is you need to kind of have faith that you can mm -hmm. make it you need to take the first step you need to realize that failure isn't necessarily failure because you're learning from the opportunities you're learning from things is there anything else you would say to someone who is struggling to start their passion their dream is there any other advice you would give them? Yeah, it's similar. I, I, I think it was one of the questions was like, hey, what would you say like to yourself? Like, you, know, you see this every once in a while, right? And I would say, you know, I would say, hey, stop thinking and just start, mm. right? Because if we, if, we're, if we stay in here, we'll stay on that, that hamster wheel, I call it, of just running, 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 and then we get off and it's the same result because we're not doing anything different. We're just thinking and we're running, running. So it's like, just start. I don't care what it is. It could be messy. I don't, I don't care. And you have to say, if I'm failing, you know, you know, fail forward, right? Just fail forward into wherever you're going and not worry about it. It's just, just start. It's like two words. And it sounds like, wait, that can't be that easy. Yeah, it, it, it is that easy. Just, just start. And we're, we have so much capability within here to figure out, right? We will figure it out if we believe that we can so you know so with the mindset of belief just start and and everything will you know you look back and go man and that's why i say all the time it's like hey i wish i would have had that like 10 years but then i then i combat that and go well if i did i wouldn't have had the experiences that i learned right the failures that i learned from the the obstacles that i overcame i wouldn't have had that had i just started so it's kind of a you know twofold right you say okay just start mm -hmm. but if it's not, I believe that if it's not time for you, then it's not time. Because I, I, I kind of knew all that. And then one day it just kind of went, boom. And I go, oh, okay. Mm. This is what I'm supposed to do, right? <laughs> so mm. I just started. So that would be the biggest thing. Just start, believe, you know, put forth that effort, that discipline, and having that attitude that I can and I can do better and I will be better. Mm. And, and as you grow, you will ultimately end up at that place but again it's going to it's going to be tough it's not going to be easy if it was you know they say if it's you know if your life easy you're going to have a hard life if it's a hard life it's going to get easy because you're going to do those hard things and then in the end it will start to get easier because you you attack those hard things first and that's making that first step mm -hmm. that's you know going towards those fears um steering towards those fears shifting around those fears and and believing that you can and as you do that you'll start to kind of plant those flags along that bridge like hey here's my marker i achieved this and then it's like what's next right it's like okay well what what's next i wanted to write a book okay did that now what's next and you hear people that talk about that because these successful people they didn't just show up one day and they were successful you know they figured out solutions to all those obstacles all those opportunities they figured out a solution yeah and is you have to say, if they can do it, why can't you do it? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, there's this saying, I don't know how it actually goes, but the same lessons will keep coming around until you learn what it's there yeah. for. <laughs> so if you don't face right. head on these things, it's just going to keep coming around. Mm -hmm. It's just going to mm -hmm. keep teaching you the same lesson. So you need to face these things head on, else you're going to be stuck with this lesson for a very long time. So you might right. as well go head on, <laughs> learn it. Um, and kind of move on but I completely understand about how you said it kind of just twigged one day mm -hmm. like you just started doing it like it was just right and that happened for me as well I think about a year ago I started doing daily videos on my Facebook but before that I when I started it as well I felt so annoyed at myself that I hadn't started before yeah like you were saying to yourself like I wish I learned this 10 years ago but as you were saying you need to like 
let that go and also forgive yourself. So if someone is here watching this and thinking, oh yeah, I do just need to start. Why haven't I done this? Then start and kicking yourself. Also learn to forgive yourself and realize what has happened has happened. Forgive mm -hmm. yourself and just get going. Start on your, yeah. your tracks because so many people can live in the past like being annoyed at themselves that they haven't started. I know I right. have before where it's just let's go, let's go the past and just move forward now with the present. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's exactly what, and, and, and I would encourage someone to not, because as soon as you, that's that doubt of like, well, why didn't you start? And then that doubt says, because you can't do it, right? The doubt goes, that's why you didn't start. And then so you end up in that same, that same vicious cycle. And, you, and then like five years later, right? So it's like, and everyone will tell you, I don't care who you listen to, you'll hear them say, just start just take that one little step like it's almost like pleading with someone like please whatever you do just start I'm begging you you will thank yourself later one little step even if it was messy you know you tripped you fell no one liked it no one looked at it you know it, you go back and you read like I you know I write all this stuff down and I go back and look at it and go gosh that was interesting that I thought that but that's okay because you're learning you're mm -hmm. figuring out now you scratch out okay that didn't work what does work and what do you feel is your purpose of that, right? What do you feel is your purpose? And, and when you're okay with that, when you align with that, I call it definite of purpose, when you're aligned with what you're doing, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter because it's not for anyone else, it's for you. And you mm -hmm. figure out what that is and you give that out. You know, you, you, my yeah. coach says, hey, share that. My coach says, share that with the world. Share that with the world. Be open and vulnerable and okay with failure and just share it out. Because you, what you get back in value is so much more beneficial than what someone will tell you or what someone does. You'll feel that, you know, I felt like, hey, I did something here. Mm. And that's what it's all about. It's, to me, it's that purpose yeah. of doing what you're doing. And it, there's no greater feeling for me. So make yeah. that step. If there's something you're dreaming on, I, I would encourage you to listen and make that step, that very first one, because it could change just that fast. That first one could be the, the step that just kind of takes you on and, Yep, yeah, and you, you just snowball, and you look back and you go, yeah, they say, and you, and you can laugh at it, you know, in 10 years when you're going, hey, yeah, I remember when I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't think I could do this, and I doubted it, and, it, and it's humorous, but then you go and you show that, and you help someone else, right? Mm -hmm. We have to give it back. We, 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 we overcome something. There's always someone a few steps behind you that yeah. needs that encouragement. Yeah. But don't, don't hold on to it, right? Don't like what we're doing here. Don't hold on to what helped us. We're, we're pushing that back out and, and, yeah. and it will help someone get to that level. And also the beneficial like the fr thing from that is when you're teaching these things that you're learning, you're also teaching yourself. Yeah. The best way to <laughs> learn is to teach. And that's why I make mm -hmm. these videos because I'm not perfect in the slightest and I still struggle right. with all of these things. But the yeah. more I teach them, I feel great because I'm helping someone, even if it's just that one person, like you said. And also I'm making myself better because I'm getting it in my noggin that I yeah. need to change <laughs> these things and like to change my mindset and to change my beliefs. And I'm doing that by teaching. Like you were saying, make the step now. You'll, f you'll realize that I love quotes, but another quote, here we go. Um, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. I like yes. that too. Yes, that's perfect right there and there's someone saying oh it's too late no it's never too late if you're if you still have the breath the life you still have an opportunity so it's never too late you're you know you have to say hey there's something i'm supposed to do figure it out and you can't figure it out if you don't step off of that comfort and say well this is just the way it is no that's the way it's been not the way it is the way it is is how you make it right that decision today that step today is going to change how it is so there's two separate things you know every day it's like i'm going this way you know, I'm getting better. I'm growing. I'm trying. So it, yeah, it, I love that. You have planted today, please. <laughs> <laughs> it is really a feeling though, because that purpose is a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's following your feelings. Take the action where you feel it is right. Even if it may not be right, it's right in that time. At least that's right. what I believe. Is there anything else as a final word or anything to add that you think would benefit the audience? I encourage people to just not just listen today and go, okay, that felt good. And, you know, we, we, we're inspired for the moment, but then we go back and we don't do anything with it, right? It, it's so easy. We hear something, we hear a good quote, or we watch a motivational video, or we hear a talk like this, and then we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, we get back into our life and, and it's going to happen. 
that's going to happen, but that's where you have to take that stand. That's where they have to, you have to step in and say, but I'm not going to just not take action. I'm not going to just absorb this inner energy and be a gatherer of information and not of action, right? Don't gather information and not take action because it's, it's a waste. There's so much ability in, within us all. There's so much greatness that we have that if we haven't made that effort, then we're kind of cheating ourselves, right? We're cheating yeah. ourselves and we're cheating everyone around us. So, you know, my final would be like, hey, don't just watch this. Don't just watch anything that's of motivation or read something of inspiration. Because if, if you're watching this, right, if you're watching this, if you're reading something of inspiration, if you're watching a video of inspiration, there's a reason you're doing that, right? There's a reason you're doing that. You're just doing it because there's nothing else to watch because there's plenty of Netflix. There's plenty of... <clears throat> things on YouTube and all this stuff. But if you're watching something that is of growth, is of a changing of your mindset, you're trying something inside of you is saying it wants to grow. It's like, I want to do better. I want to grow. Mm. So don't ignore it. Just take that action, you know, start tomorrow, start today, just write it down and say, Hey, I'm yeah. going to do this tomorrow and just go with it something inside of you is saying that you want something to change like if you're watching this or you're watching anything motivational or if you're questioning life there's something inside you that's saying let's yeah. change let's do this but yeah and definitely yep. coming in with the quotes again everyone says that knowledge is power <laughs> but um the power is in the action whilst using the mm -hmm. knowledge like knowledge is power but it's more powerful when used <laughs> but yeah. yeah yeah no yeah don't be a gatherer of information. Like there's people that have so much information and knowledge, but they're not using it. So it's, 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 it's useless, mm. you know? <laughs> Definitely. Right. I am going to leave it at that because I am, I'm motivated now and I need to go and do some <laughs> things. I need to go make some action, but I just want to say thank you so much for being here Willie. I really, really appreciate you. And I really appreciate this friendship this relationship i really hope it grows hopefully you'll come back again but to anyone oh, yeah. anyone who is watching this thank you so much for watching if you have liked it please like please subscribe hit the bell button so you never miss a limitless show and yeah let us know what you think in the comments and i will put all of willie's details in the description below so you can be you know inspired by his monday morning motivational videos on facebook and everything that he does there so thank you so much for watching and i will see you next weekend bye all right thanks emily take care